Now, for more on the story, we are pleased to be joined by pollster John Zogby of Zogby Analytics. John is also the author of First Globals, Understanding, Managing, and Unleashing Our Millennial Generation. He Skypes in from Utica, New York. It's Skyping in from Northern Virginia, presidential historian Craig Shirley. Craig is also the president of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs, and he's the author of Last Act, The Final Years, and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. Great to see both of you guys. This is very exciting, obviously. We're on the eve here of New Hampshire. Let's first talk to you, John. You know, the numbers Miranda mentioned in these polls, Trump in the lead, but it's the battle for silver and bronze that's so compelling. John, you know this, New Hampshire residents are known for jumping from candidate to candidate. What's your read on this primary eve? Well, remember that on Tuesday, we don't know which way independents are going to go. They can go in the Democratic primary as well as uh, the Republican primary. Kasich seems to be steady and seems to be increasing a little bit. The numbers on Rubio are the ones that I'm watching uh, uh, very closely because um, he was hurt. He hasn't really gained momentum, but I don't see, uh, you know, some of the polls don't have him sliding. This is not Ted Cruz's state under any circumstances. Uh, right, far right conservatives, with the exception of Pat Buchanan, have not won this state. I think this is a battle for Donald Trump and his own expectations. He underperformed uh, versus the polls in Iowa. And the mark now is John Kasich. Can John Kasich get into the 20s? If he does, he's the man to watch. Interesting. The Ohio governor really right now on the uprise. Well, Craig, you know, we're hearing from Jeb Bush. He called Donald Trump just a real estate guy. I actually called him a loser in one of the interviews. Uh, is he going to make this upper tier of candidates tomorrow night? He's definitely showing a different side. But what do you think of Jeb 2.0? Can voters get behind this update? I'm not so sure. You know, New Hampshire historically has not been good for the Bush family. Of course, his father lost their badly to Ronald Reagan in 1980 and of course then his brother lost there badly to uh, John McCain so New Hampshire has not bode well I think it's interesting Donald Trump is kind of a, a stride the whole Republican Party right now just hurling his thunderbolts down and and picking off candidate after candidate after candidate I agree with John uh, you know Kasich has been kind of out of the fray as far as the uh, the contentious battle for second place Rubio got badly hurt in the debate the other night Cruz hasn't recovered from uh, Iowa I, I think that, uh, ironically, this all benefits, uh, might benefit Kasich because he's the least controversial right now. And so I would look to him for, uh, to come in a possible uh, second in New Hampshire. Interesting. You guys are on the same page on that. I want to talk a little bit more about Jeb. Turn to his family on the campaign trail. Of course, we're going to see the former president down in South Carolina, his brother. But actually brought his mother, 90-year-old former First Lady Barbara Bush, joining him on the trail. I'm not sure, actually, is it a trailer? There's so much snow on the ground right there. But check out Barbara Bush. She's not going to let a little snow get in the way of campaigning for her son. Well, Donald Trump has taken exception to some of Barbara Bush's comments, tweeting out, wow, Jeb Bush, whose campaign is in total disaster, had to bring in mommy to take a slap at me. Not nice. Now, John, people love Barbara Bush, but Republicans in New Hampshire, they also seem to be loving Donald Trump right now. He underperformed in Iowa in the first caucus, seems to have a big lead coming up in South Carolina and Nevada. What is your take right now as far as where he stands inside the GOP primary process? He leads, and that's about it. Now it's a battle of expectations. Um, you know, I, I, I suppose he probably wins, but, but again, there's that not only the underperformance of Iowa that's a, that's a cloud, it's also the fact that there's fluidity here among voters, particularly uh, independent voters, who may be a little bit tired of the boastfulness. Uh, New Hampshireites are noted for their independence. Look, Jeb Bush had a wonderful night the other night, but it could very well mark his valedictory. He's not moving in the polls. This might be a nice way of saying goodbye. Same with Chris Christie. Chris Christie knockout punches. One thing we do know, if Christie survives New Hampshire, we do know that he can grill up a mean Carolina barbecue, especially if Marco Rubio is the brisket. Yeah, you mentioned Chris Christie taking on Marco Rubio Saturday night. Everyone's talking about Rubio and his debate performance. In fact, there's been a few sightings of Rubio robots, the talking point 3000 models. This all started, John, you mentioned between that exchange with Chris Christie at the debate. Let's watch for a second. 
So here's the bottom line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is. The memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's there the it reason is, everybody. why this campaign is so important. You know what the shame is, Marco? The shame is that you would actually criticize somebody for showing up to work, plowing the streets, getting the trains run back on time, when you've never been responsible for Chris, that in your entire life. Okay. Craig, fascinating. You know, pundits, yes. I thought the Marco Mentum was just going to go crazy after Iowa. We were going to talk about him all week. It really came to a stop after that exchange. Where do you think Marco is right now, Marco Rubio, is after this last exchange and what he's done the last couple of days? Well, he's foundering. He's drifting. He didn't identify, you know, what, the, the timing is everything in politics. And when you have the spotlight on you, you have to control the narrative. And he should have come out with a defining issue or a series of defining issues on foreign policy, taxes, social policy, and, and pick up a, a signature issue that everybody could identify with him going into New Hampshire instead of just running uh, the personality campaign that he continues to run. And he just, it, it's not working for him. And he's, uh, I, I don't see him continuing much after New Hampshire unless he finds an issue to, uh, to hang on to and start getting identified with it to the voters. I thought that I, Rubio's... Go, oh, go ahead, John. Yeah, two things about Rubio. One is it was impossible for me to see before Saturday night how Rubio did not get on the ticket in 2016. Whether he won a few primaries or didn't, he was the man for vice president. Those days are over. Unless the voters speak and he wins these primaries outright, he's just gone. Um, he, he's been neutralized. Secondly, there was a backstory here too, because everything that, um, uh, that, that Chris Christie said about Marco Rubio, being young, being inexperienced, being on talking points, being a first term senator, and never having really accomplished anything before, was also true of Ted Cruz. I think you're seeing Cruz's numbers go down also because perhaps he's not ready for prime time yet uh, as well. All right, I can't have two great political minds on the air without getting some predictions from you guys. So why don't you give us one, two, three. And then also, uh, I want you guys to tell me if you think any of the candidates will be dropping out after New Hampshire before they head down to South Carolina. And Craig, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Trump first, uh, look for Kasich second, and uh, probably uh, Rubio or Cruz uh, would be uh, third, but a distant third. I think, I think Kasich's going to emerge as the establishment uh, choice to, uh, to Donald Trump. So, Craig, what do you okay. think? Does that mean that Christie's going to drop out? Do you think if he doesn't I get in that top tier? I don't see how Christie, Christie uh, may have, uh, you know, it, it, politics isn't physics because you take away from one doesn't mean you necessarily add to another. He took away from uh, Marco Rubio badly in the uh, debate, but that doesn't mean those votes automatically accrue to him. So I think Christie might be looking uh, at getting out after uh, after uh, tomorrow and maybe uh, several others as well. Jeb Bush is going to continue into South Carolina because he has uh, he has supported the uh, political infrastructure there, but I'm not sure that going to Florida, he's going to continue much after that as well. All right, fascinating. All right. And John, some of your thoughts. What do you think? One, two, three. Well, first of all, let me just say, I, I've been a Craig Shirley Democrat all my life. And so uh, you're supposed to laugh, Craig. I am. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I'm, glad I'm a John Zaghi Republican. Uh, uh, he is neck and neck with uh, with, with, with Kasich. Um, Cruz comes in third, but distantly so. All right, John, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much to the both of you. Mutual respect across the aisle. You got to love it. All right, thank you so much to both. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. And we want to thank you for your comments. If you want to weigh in, we have several ways to do so. A lot of people are giving us some of their viewpoints. Send your comments in to NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. You can also send your comments via email, Facebook, and Twitter. We're going to be right back right here on Newsmax Prime for a Monday. I'm Rick Blackwell in for J.D. Hayworth.